Thanks for that very kind introduction. It is really thrilling to be at Powell's, and it's great to see so many familiar faces. Sure. Is this better? Okay. Let me just move it down a little bit so I can see you while I'm speaking into the microphone. Um, it's great to see so many familiar faces, including former colleagues and uh, yoga classmates and just, you know, everybody who's anybody in my life is here tonight, and uh, I really appreciate that. But it's also great to see so many new faces, and um, that means that there are people who don't know me who are interested in this really, I think, important topic, so I appreciate your being here. So as the familiar faces know, I'm a Portlander, and I researched and wrote The Body Toxic in a little office just across the street from Powell's. I walked by Powell's every day as I was working on this book, thinking that oh, if I can just finish this book, maybe one day I'll be reading at Powell's. And so this is the day. And um, I really want to thank everyone who supported and encouraged me along the way. And um, thank you. Um, so tonight, I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I wrote The Body Toxic, and I'm going to read very briefly from it. Then I'm going to share some details about the hazardous chemistry of everyday things in our homes and offices. In my book, I focus on five hormone mimicking or hormone disrupting chemicals. Bisphenol A, which is the building block of polycarbonate plastic. You may have heard about this chemical recently because Canada banned it from baby bottles. And I think in Oregon we're going to be hearing more about it because I um, have a strong uh, hunch that there may be some legislation introduced about bisphenol A in the upcoming session. Um, and I, I write about perfluorinated chemicals, or PFCs, and these are chemicals that impart grease, oil, and water repel repelling qualities to food wrapping papers, fabrics, and nonstick pans. Uh, I write about flame retardants called polybrominated diphenyl ethers, or PBDEs, and these are used in upholstered furniture and electronics. And then phthalates, which are a very versatile chemical that's in everything from PVC plastic to personal care products. And I also write about atrazine, which is a best-selling agricultural weed killer. So finally, what I, I will explain some simple changes I've made in my own life as a result of doing the research for the body toxic, and then I'll do my best to answer your questions. So before I do any of that, I um, was hoping to see a show of hands. I'm curious, how many of you eat microwave popcorn? Wow, this is, a, this is a, a, a not the average crowd. Okay, so, there, so there's only a few of you who are eating microwave popcorn. And, um, and maybe the few of you who are still eating microwave popcorn um, will decide that's something that you don't want to do after we're done here tonight. Um, it's one of the things that I changed in my life after doing the research. So how did I get started on this path writing about toxic chemicals and everyday things? A few years ago, I was reading the New York Times, and I stumbled onto this article about some new work by the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta. And it, it said the CDC was tracking traces of chemical pollutants, including some chemicals used in everyday things, um, in the blood and urine of a representative sample of the population. So these kinds of measurements are called biomonitoring. And up until I heard about biomonitoring, I always thought of pollution as an external insult affecting the environment. But what the CDC was reporting and tracking, this um, idea, this, this, uh, ch these chemical pollutants in people, it really brought home for me the concept that our bodies share the burden of pollution too. At the same time, the information gathered through biomonitoring raised some important questions that I thought, as a journalist, I might be able to answer. Should we be concerned about the effects of these pollutants on our health? Can everyday items be responsible for the chemicals inside us? Don't regulators already make sure we're safe from daily doses of hazardous substances? So I started digging, and I soon discovered some things that were, were for me, truly stunning. And I'm going to read a little bit um, about how I begin to tell the story of what I found. The turnoff to the tiny hamlet of Bolinas is unmarked from California Highway 1 as it twists along Pacific, Pacific Ocean headlands one hour north of San Francisco. Every time highway crews put up a sign pointing to Bolinas, the locals take it down. 
A building moratorium enacted in 1971 preserves Bolinas much as it was during its counterculture heyday. A colony of 1,560 artists, writers, healers, and activists intent on safeguarding their Bohemian community from commercial encroachment. While many mansions and new subdivisions dot nearby Stinson Beach, Bolina still looks like it did when Richard Nixon was in the White House and Bill Clinton inhaled. <laughs> Downtown boasts a grocery store with more free-range dogs loitering outside than patrons shopping inside, a restaurant that serves the freshest ingredients from nearby farms, and a gas station with a bed and be breakfast above it. Victorian houses and weathered clapboard cottages rim the shore of Bolinas Lagoon, a haven for pelicans and a regular pit stop for migratory birds navigating the Pacific Flyway. Living costs have gone up in Bolinas, but local sensibilities and the pristine landscape have stayed the same. Twenty years ago, Charles Patton discovered the town and fell in love with it. I used to come out to Bolinas and play music, said Patton, a pianist and singer who studied at the Berklee College of Music in Boston. That led to playing bluegrass and jazz for a living. She met her husband, Michael Lerner, in Bolinas. He founded and directs Commonweal, an alternative medicine think tank and cancer healing center that occupies a former RCA transmission site overlooking the Pacific in Bolinas, where the couple lives. Approaching the age of 60, Patton has the trim build and spirited glow of a woman who pays attention to diet and exercise. It's easy to eat organic at Bolinas, said Patton, who also takes advantage of miles of beaches right outside her door and nearby hiking trails that crisscross breathtaking vistas in Point Reyes National Seashore. She was raised on a Colorado ranch, and she likes to be outdoors. The bungalow she shares with her husband came with a spectacular garden. Patton enjoys tending the previous owner's legacy, adding more color and texture to the garden every year. She's always taken good care of herself, avoiding the pitfalls of drugs, booze, and tobacco that plagued others of her generation, especially fellow musicians. And it shows. She stands straight, which makes her look even taller than her five feet eight. A short tousle of blonde hair fr frames blue eyes that twinkle and a wide, slightly lopsided smile. Patton displays the energy of a woman half her age as an activist on issues of health and the environment. In 2001, in Stockholm, as a leader of a network of 350 non-governmental organizations from around the world, Patton helped guide the UN's Persistent Organic Pollutants Treaty, which calls for the worldwide elimination of a dirty dozen list of chemical contaminants considered among the world's most hazardous. Intellectually, she understands as well as anyone the ubiquitous nature of chemical pollutants, but she didn't expect the emotional jolt she felt when she learned that her body was polluted with traces of 105 chemicals linked in animal studies to a list of devastating health effects, including cancer, disruption of the hormone system, birth deformities, and neurological impairments. I don't live next door to a refinery or an incinerator or some kind of factory, said Patton, whose blood and urine were screened for chemical pollutants after she volunteered for a study conducted by Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York. I've been careful, and it hasn't made a bit of difference in terms of the chemicals that are in my body. It turns out that what's in Patton is in every one of us. Unlike our forebears, everyone, everywhere, now carries a dizzying array of chemical contaminants, the byproducts of modern industry and innovation, 